take two. <laughs> we're back. We have no idea what happened. We seriously were talking. We're just talking and my phone went black. It did die. It's plugged in. Yeah, it's we have a cordy thing. So, we, and the internet didn't go down. Like, I have no idea. So wait so for sorry. people to come back on? Yeah, we're, we're going to wait for a couple more minutes. So, it's okay. We just got started. Oh, good. We won't go back through all the animal stuff. Yeah, we'll just... Hi, we have a... There's Brad Meyer. There we go. So oh. sorry for that, guys. We have no idea what happened. Uh, thank you so much for... We didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> no. No, we didn't do it on purpose. Logan Corkins. Wait a minute. Ah, oh, Frank Stanley. Thanks for coming back on. We appreciate that. So sorry, guys. Thank you, everyone, for coming back. Yeah, absolutely. Kimmy Jackson, glad that you're back. It's like starting from... Like we just... I know. Well, Next night. Hi again. And we're back. See, we just like the high part. You know, we just want that again. So, <laughs> so we just keep. We just do that. Siobhan, totally. glad you're here. Now we just wait. At least now I can finish the rest of my coffee. Your I mom, thought you said you were already finished. Well, like, I, it gets low, but your mom always yells at me when I, like, leave just a little bit of coffee left in the bottom it's of it. it's ruining it. You're just, you're just wasting coffee. Although, it's kind of gross. He just drinks straight black coffee. It's disgusting. Well, if you put anything in it, then it's not coffee. Then you got a milkshake no, or... No, you just put, like, in a teaspoon of milk, and it's so much better. No. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Not and, at like, all. half and half. All right. Okay, our thing is crooked, and it's bugging me. Is it off a little bit? Is that better? <laughs> your internet just knew you weren't done with your coffee yet. Yeah, absolutely right. Nope, you didn't mess anything up, Thelma. Uh, we, just the... That, that's it's back. back on. On. <laughs> I like that, Susie. That's what I'm going to say now. Why do you waste your coffee? That's his backwash. That's all I'm going to say. Black backwash. I don't know. Because after I do devotions, I go right back upstairs and I tuck in the younger girls. And they always say you smell like <laughs> milk does make it better. The person next to me smells. Natalie, we're going to. Thank gonna... you. Shakes are cold. Coffee is hot. Exactly. You can add some milk and it still be hot because it's not like we're, dra we're adding milk and then just a little bit of coffee. I tell some people drink it. They have more uh, creamer and stuff in it than Also, they do. on shows, it's like whenever people drink anything they'll go like ah. <laughs> that's what you just did you went ah. all right we're gonna go take two we're gonna get right back into it do the devotional parts um <laughs> i love cream and sugar with some coffee that's hilarious well we're in uh, matthew 15 and what we were talking about is you know uh we we're talking about everything that's going on in our culture and our nation you know uh k is 12 now yes wow time flies Time flies. So case 12, and so, you know, we're, we're inter introducing her to bigger topics in life, and, and one of these is going on. So we watch the news, and we try to keep them informed, and, and it gives us an opportunity to walk with them through this. And 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 so it's, uh, I think Kay said the other day, she was like, just, uh, just, I forgot the word you used, just how you felt about it. Uh, almost like grotesque, grotesque just grossed out or I, something like that yeah it was, I, it's disgusting yeah there you go that was the word so. there you go so um but what we're talking about is you know we live in a culture where especially with social media we can just say whatever we want and what i was getting ready to say before it cut black was you know when i talk uh, if i'm talking to Kay and i say something directly to her and i'm there to gauge her emotional response to that and what's hard is you know, when you think you're on internet, it's like they, all those people don't have feelings, but they do. Yeah, exactly. So, so what we're prone to in our culture is just to kind of say whatever we want on social media, and we don't have to worry about the impact that our words are going to have because we're not face to face, and we lose that that empathy. And because of that, you know, we're able to, we have the ability to say a lot more harmful, mean things uh, on any capacity. That because you wouldn't say face to face. That you wouldn't say face to face. That's exactly right. But here's the kicker. It still matters, though. Just because it's online and it's not face to face, you know, the Bible says that we're, you know, we need to hold every thought captive and, and we're going to have to answer for every word. And so um, looking at Matthew 15, uh, Jesus, um, and he's, and he called, uh, starting in verse 10, so Matthew 15, verse 10, and he called the people to him and he said to them, hear and understand. And, and I think those words are really needed 
um, for all of us, not just people that we see on the news, whatever political party we're against, or I, I think all of us need to hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a person. So in the context, yes, Jesus is uh, kind of defending the disciples because they were uh, eating just uh, some grain um, without washing their hands. And so that's the context is, you know, the Pharisees were so focused on, oh, you got to you have this ritual washing, hand washing before you eat. And, and that's, uh, and if you don't do that, then you're not clean. And so, and, and so that's the context. But I think the principle behind this is still really good. So verse 12, then the disciples came and they said to him, uh, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard uh, this saying? And he answered, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be rooted up and let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to them, explain this, explain the parable to us. In verse 16, uh, and he, Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? I hope Jesus never says that to me, even though I'm guilty as charged. Yes, I am without understanding. Um, I kind of like Peter. I'm glad that he asked these questions because <laughs> I needed Jesus to uh, tell me. He says, do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled out? Basic, basic human anatomy. We all understand that. But what comes out of the mouth, talking about our words, proceeds from the heart. And this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. Now, none of those issues are happening right now in our culture, right? Like evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. Or it kind of does, really does describe us. And these are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. And so... Looking at our culture, our words matter. And our words are powerful. That whole phrase, sticks and, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words... Cannot hurt you? Yeah, words will never hurt you. They do. They do. That's, that's the biggest lie. You know, I, I can look at my hands or, you know, on my knees and be like, oh, I remember when I was, you know, eight and I got in a bad bike wreck. That's how I got that scar or... You know, oh, here's this one. My brother actually stabbed me with a knife when my mom wasn't home. That's how I got that one. Don't leave me on home alone. Yeah, we were like 10 and 12 or something like that, and we were wrestling, and we had a knife, and that's what happens. But I don't remember the pain. But I do remember the pain of hurtful words that have been said decades ago, and, and we hold on to those. And so knowing that, we need to be mindful, and even Paul says later to like, you know, how we, uh, uh, how we speak to each other, that matters. And so even now, uh, we need to hear and understand. I think of James, we need to be slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to become angry. I know we put it in a different order, but we need to be slow to speak. And I think a lot of that, um, we all know what it's like to, you know, when we're, when we're venting about something and we have someone that can understand us and understand where we're coming from, like there's just healing in that. That even though the whole situation hasn't changed, just knowing it's like, hey, I can come and talk to you and you understand what's going on. Like you dealt the same thing. Yeah, you've dealt with the same thing or just you, you, you sympathize uh, with the struggle that we're going through. So it's like, you know, I think some of the best things that we could do is not say anything at all and just hear and understand and if that's uh, people of a, of a different race or color or culture you know um, there's there's a lot there that we could just hear and understand uh, yeah I think of Job's friends if you read the beginning of Job he had three friends that show up gave him bad advice but the greatest thing that he they did the first seven days they said nothing they just came along Job and just were present with him and supported him exactly so um, we're really challenged, like, how can we be a light in this? Just hear and understand and, and control our speech. But as James says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry, and just hear and understand. And, and not just with this issue, but a lot of them. When I slow down and I just hear the person and understand, 
I kind of find out, yeah, I had a lot of preconceived ideas that I was wrong about. And so I encourage you, like, it sounds simple. And the, it, the gospel and living this out, it, it is simple, difficult to do, but it's a simple thing. Love God, love your neighbor. How do you love your neighbor? Listen to them, hear them, understand them, understand what they're going through. Um, and a lot of times, um, a lot of people just feel like they have no one to turn to. And, and here we are as the church saying, come, if you're broken, oppressed, like, find rest here. But I think we need to extend an ear and extend some understanding so that people would be able to find rest. It's, they're not going to find rest just in this building with two by fours and drywall. They're going to find rest in the church, meaning they, get, they have a family that's not biological, but it's deeper. It's, it's a family by faith that they can come and find a home in and find family in. So, um, but yeah, we have some prayer requests here. We are going to be praying for all uh, friends and family, everyone affected by the storm last night, down trees, a lot of craziness there. Um, Rebecca asked us to be praying for a uh, Glenn, Rob, Jacob, Eden, and Nathan. Uh, and then Star has a, a little girl in her neighborhood asking for a Bible. Uh, and so we definitely want to be uh, lift up her parents as well. Kay, who are you praying for? I'm praying for everyone who's like quarantined or in their family. Yeah. So this one hits kind of close to home for us. We have a neighbor girl that's uh, real close to Kay and Ryan's age. Um, that It's just been a blessing for them to be able to kind of uh, still play and social distance. But she had to be quarantined for uh, 14 days. And so she has her window open, and our kids are down in the their driveway, and they're still talking. We got walkie-talkies. <laughs> and so they bought walkie-talkies. So uh, our neighbor girl could still feel connected to our girls. Um, so that was kind of fun. It was a neat little thing of, you know, what can we do, even though our our friend, our neighbor girl, had to be quarantined. And they were playing games the other day. They were trying to hand her something, using a <laughs> hockey stick and a bag. It got or... stuck on the roof. <laughs> so, hey, uh, but it's awesome. Just, uh, just a way to reach out literally to your neighbor. Sometimes you just need to use a hockey stick to reach your neighbor. Six Who knew? feet away. <laughs> Six feet away. There you go. So let's pray. Kay, you're going to start us, and then I'll mm -hmm. close us. Okay. All right. Thank you, God, for this day. I thank you um, that people are going around picking up the branches, and I just pray that um, all the anyone who's been affected by the storms, that um, they'll just everything will go back to normal. And um, I pray for anyone who's in quarantine, and I just pray that they won't feel lonely, and that they'll be able to go closer to you in this. Amen. Lord, we do love you, and we trust you, and we just uh, we need your courage, we need boldness, we need uh, we need faith, Lord. To, to hear and understand and, and to know maybe the, the best thing that we could do is just be slow to speak and just be quick to listen um, and, and provide, um, provide a church home, a family uh, for people to feel that feel like they're alone through all of this. Um, Lord, let that be said of us. Isn't that what the, your, your church call, you, you called your church to be? And so, Lord, I pray that we would respond in obedience to you that we would reach out to the lost and the broken um, and the hurting and the love of Christ. And whether that's in our communities, across our nation, overseas, Lord, I pray that uh, we would be obedient to the mission that you have put in our hearts. Uh, Father, I do lift up Rebecca. I thank you for her faith as um, she asked for prayer for uh, Glenn, Rob, Jacob, Eden, and Nathan. Lord, be with them. You know exactly what's going on in their lives and the situations. You know the need that they have. And I just, we know you're the ultimate provider. That whatever we need, you are the great I am. That's, that's who you are. Whatever our need is, that, that is who you are, Lord. And we will only find ultimate fulfillment and purpose and a, and a relationship with you, Lord. And so whatever that is uh, for these uh, five, Lord, I just, I just ask that you would make yourself known to them that you'd make yourself available to him, Lord. Father, again, thank you for Star and, and, and um, this little girl that's in her neighborhood that's asking for a Bible. And, and uh, Lord, I thank you that we have the ability to, to be able to provide that for them. Um, and I pray that we would um, continue to do that, to, to take your word out into our communities and, and even in literal fashion, handing Bibles out, not just preaching the gospel, but handing it to them, knowing that uh, in your word comes freedom, Lord, and 
oh, what a blessing that an 11-year-old girl is searching and wanting your word and wanting to know more about you. And, and, and she's thinking of her parents. And so we lift up that whole family uh, right now, Lord. That they'd come to know you and they would uh, see your grace and your mercy and your love and your truth, Lord. All because of an 11-year-old little girl seeking you, seeking your word. What an amazing testimony, Lord. So, Father, be that great I am that you are and provide. Continue to lead and guide us. Help us with a heart that hears and understands. Let us be mindful of the words that we speak. But let us not feel paralyzed, but God, you are able. Enable us, Lord. Use us. Let us be a useful vessel in your hands for your will, for your kingdom, to share your word. We love you. We trust you. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys so much. For watching part one and part two. Yes, I'm for watching guy. both parts. We do appreciate that. So if you wanted more of the social, just, hi, how's the lizard? Part one. <laughs> if you wanted the prayer and devotion, part two. This is yeah, that's this part, so you're good. Anyway, love you guys. Hope you have a great uh, rest of your night. There's not much of it. Hopefully we get to sleep through the night and not well, get tornado sirens. Yes, for the guy in India, he's a little for his you, day. Yes, the guy from Sam, Samuel in India. Hope you have a great day in India, bud. All right, thank you guys Bye. so much. Have a great night.